I it took forever for Instagram to let me request. How are you? How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Really? Yeah. There's also Good. a delay. It is a delay. That's weird. That is weird. Is How about it now? Still... It's good now. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hi, Christina. Thank Hi. you for talking to us today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. So um, a little bit about your background. So you're from California, right? You're yeah, I was... I was born and raised in LA, and then mm -hmm. when I was 15, we moved to Sacramento. And I also had a year in San Diego in between. Oh, wow. So you're a total California girl. Up and um, down. Your, your dad was a minister or is a minister, and he was also an actor, too. Is that true? Yeah. So my dad was an uh, actor and a dancer, like specifically like ballet, and did a lot of stuff like Broadway type shows and national tours. Um, and then he, like, had a new calling on his life and went to seminary and was preaching at a church and and that is where he met my mom who was playing the piano at the church wow i love that story is that what inspired your career in acting at any point or i mean i think i think that because of they're both artists and their background that of course our home and our life was filled with a lot of film and tv and music so i always felt like that was a path i could take but i don't know if it was what inspired it, but it was certainly encouraged. It was never like, my parents were never like, don't be an artist, don't be an actor. Right, they that's what I was gonna ask. Were they always supportive of your career path and your journey when you told them that you wanted to choose acting as a career? Yeah, which I think is such a blessing um, <laughs> because you know, everybody don't have that, um, yeah. that kind of support. And so they didn't, they weren't like, sure, you know, move to LA, we'll support you financially when you're back. <laughs> but they right. were supportive emotionally. And they right. did, I mean, they paid for me to go to undergrad knowing that I would then go to grad school for acting and that I wouldn't necessarily use my degree in the way that most people do. Wow. So that was, yeah, they're very, very generous. And speaking of, you went to Harvard, ma'am. I did. I, I mean, and you got your degree in African American studies. Why did you choose Harvard for your, I mean, it's good. But why I mean, do they have to choose you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I I was, you know, academics was a big part of my life. I knew I wanted to be an actor, but I also, you know, was really interested in other things. And a lot of it was very academic. And I was kind of a nerdy kid. Mm -hmm. um, and so I applied to a lot of really great schools. And I knew I wanted to go and get my actor training in an MFA program um, mm -hmm. and that I wanted college to be liberal arts and that I would do a bunch of acting, but I also wanted to focus on other things that I was really interested in. Um, and so I applied there just because if you're going to apply to big schools, you might as well apply and see what happens. But I didn't right. expect to get in um, at all. And so when I did, I was like, I can't not go to Harvard. I'm not going to yeah. get in and then be like, no, thanks. So, yeah. but it was no. great. Um, you had to, sorry, awesome. you, had to go. Best you had to go to Harvard. Yeah. How did your college experience prepare you for your career journey? Um, I think that a lot of people don't know that Harvard uh, produces a lot of actors and a lot of people who work in entertainment. Um, I think that a lot of people like me feel, felt similar that they wanted to go and explore other parts and facets of their, their brain and academics, um, but they also always knew that they would be an artist of some sort mm -hmm. and that the school is really set up that way. So I took a lot of classes in theater, a lot of classes in musical theater and all kinds of things. Um, and there's so many comedy writers who come out of the school. So I think I felt prepared to enter a graduate program to really get serious actor training. But I also knew that when I left, I was gonna have a really good network of other entertainers um, and people in the industry. And so that's was a blessing that when I moved back to LA, there was so many people I already knew from school. Wow, that's a blessing. Um, Christina, you've been acting since 2013. And out the gate, your first like role was Fruitvale Station. Tell us how you got that part because it came after you finished up your graduate program. Is that right? And you yeah. So, so Fruitvale um, is was, tells the story of Oscar Grant and his really unjust killing um, outside of a BART station in Oakland. And I was in graduate school in San Francisco, and Ryan Coogler was directing it, and he was doing the small roles he was casting locally. Mm -hmm. um, and so right as I graduated, I auditioned and I got it and I did it. And 
it was really nice and it was a very small role i worked for like two days but it was a nice i had never done film and tv i'd done theater the whole time and had trained in theater and so it was just a nice way to get up close to see like oh this is how cam um oh yeah sorry this is how cameras work and okay <laughs> this is what a set is like and and to sort of just learn um, and watch them for a couple of days before I moved to LA and started working more. Did you know that when you did that movie that it would become what it became and how critically acclaimed the movie was and the message behind it? Do you know about that story? I did, I knew about the story and I had moved to the Bay Area right after it had happened. Um, so it was definitely a big, it was a story I knew um, and I also knew, I read the script and I knew the film was really good. So, and I, I, I had a feeling that I'm like, oh, if I, you know, I think people will be affected by this. I didn't know what it would do for, you know, Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan's careers and all that and how it would end up panning out. But I knew it was something special and I knew that it was a story that was worth telling and that wasn't, um, wasn't always being told right in the mainstream. So I was grateful that, that it was. Definitely. Um, so, as you said, you're no stranger to theater and the stage. What do you prefer? Do you prefer theater over acting and, like, TV? Or which which one is your preference? I don't have, have one. I think, no, I don't. I'm an actor, and I want to I, I wanna work. So, um, right. I love, I think that they are different. I think that the acting and and the transformative nature of what acting is is not very different. But I think that, you know, the medium is. So, I... I when you're on a stage, you're trying to reach an audience member who could be on a third balcony and there could be a thousand people in the room. Um, and when you're in front of a camera, your audience is literally right here. This is the camera. This is you. And so, yeah, there are things and I'm, I'm not trying to affect someone that far away. So it's a different experience. But I think when it comes down to it, storytelling as at its core, I'm trying to get across a story that's been that's been written. Um, and I'm trying to embody it and inhabit it. And I think there is a different, there's a lot of differences, but I love them both so much. And mm -hmm. as much as I love theater, it doesn't pay as well as film and TV. So I got to do that. And as much as I love film and TV, I right. miss being in the room with other actors for a month, working on something and mining it and, and um, discovering it that you don't get when you're doing film and TV. So I love them both. I love that. I love that point. That's a good point. Um, the last shift on TNT, ran for five seasons. Um, and now they're re-airing like the episodes on TNT. Yeah. Did, you, did you know that? Um, I did. Because of the story that The Last Ship was about, the pandemic, if you will, kind of similar a little bit to what we're facing now. Yeah, a little um, too similar. Yeah. You played uh, Lieutenant Alicia Granderson on the show. You worked with Jocko Sims too on yeah. uh, New Amsterdam. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this story, which I was very intrigued about, the audition process. Because uh, you said that your manager told you when you went into audition for this role that you wouldn't get it. You, he just wanted you to go, I believe it was. And yeah, and, it, and I, I said that in other interviews, and I'm not saying it like it was not shade. It was, yeah. I had just moved to LA, back to LA. Mm -hmm. um, it was my very first audition for a series regular on TV. I hadn't done no TV at all. Right. Um, and so he, his point was, this is, it's great that you're in the room. It's great that the casting director even wants to see you, but there's levels to this. Like you need to do a co-star, then a guest star, then, you know, then you might get, do a recurring and then get a series regular at some point down the line. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, this isn't for you to go and try to book the job. You need to go and try to book the room and get the casting director to want to call you back for something else. Right. And so I wanted to be really prepared and I wanted to, you know, go in and do my best work, not so that I could get the job, but so that I could, she could call me back for other stuff. Right. Um, and on the day that I was going in, my car broke down. I had to get a whole new battery. It was a whole mess. I was hours late. They were like, we're not going to see her. Then we are going to see her. Um, and so when I got there, I was super nervous. And the casting director was like, you need to calm down. And I thought she was talking to me, like, Christina, calm down. She was uh -huh. talking about the character, talking about the act, the, the role. <laughs> And I was like all in my feelings, but I think that sort of pressure helped with the job because the scene and the whole show right. is about a Navy crew under a lot of pressure trying to find a cure for a pandemic. Right. Um, and so it worked out and they used that tape for the rest of the audition process. So I never went back in for a callback or for a test. They just kept using that same tape. And then you know, I, I love that story because it's very real. 
right? How many people have been trying to get somewhere to a job interview or an audition or something, yeah. but then things happen? Or you're told maybe not that your manager was throwing shade, but he was just preparing you that it would be one way and then it turned yeah. out better than, it, yeah. than what you expected. I think that's a beautiful lesson. It was a blessing. Yeah, definitely. Um, 20s on BET. Yeah. Miss Marie, I love that show. Tell Thanks. us, yes. Um, how did you get involved in that project? Sure. Um, so I've known about the project for a long time just because I knew Lena personally for a long mm -hmm. time. So like I knew that it was something that she had been working on and it sort of hopped around mm -hmm. to different studios and networks. Um, and it was always something that I knew was like sort of her baby. And I remember in 2000, I think 13 or 14, maybe 15, I don't remember, when they did the, the pilot presentation on, <laughs> on YouTube and I was into that and I was like, this is great. Um, and so when it finally was back at BET, uh, back, actually it was back at TBS, it was at TBS. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like gonna have auditions and it was gonna actually be made into a pilot. Mm -hmm. I was so grateful to get the call to audition. And I went through that whole process and wow. testing and chemistry reads and all those things. Um, and it was much more traditional process than the last ship. I was back in there over and over <laughs> and over. Right. Um, but after about a month of that, to get a call from her saying that Marie is yours. And I felt, I, you know, I don't feel like I know when I'm going to get a job, but I did feel like I was right for it. I felt mm -hmm. like this is something I can do, something that I, I, I felt I, I had a hook into her. I, I feel like I understood her psyche a little bit yeah. um, and that I just really liked her and really liked the world of the show. So I was super grateful. And then to work with Lena as a boss was just a dream, too. So, so many dreams came true. Yes. Um, you've been blessed, I will say. You've been definitely oh, blessed. Yeah. Um, who did you channel for your character, Marie? Was it a little bit of you? Did you know Marie? Or who did you pull for that character? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I channeled anyone. I think that there is a little bit of me in there for sure. In that mm -hmm. Marie is all about just if I do this right and I check right. these boxes and everything will go to plan, then my life should be perfect. And I sort of have that feeling a lot. Um, right. Where I'm like, if I just go to this school and then I go to this graduate school and then I get out and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to be famous and it's fine. Um, and life doesn't work that way. And I think Marie's in a moment of discovering that no matter how well you plan and all the things you think you did right, that if you haven't been sort of invested in who you are as a person and, and have a relationship with God and feel spiritually grounded and that all these things won't matter. Um, and so I, I, that's definitely a part of me is in there. Um, yes. But I think I do know some Marie's. I know a lot of Marie's. A lot of people who are quick to, to tell you how to live your life because they look like they're living theirs right. Oh, like theirs right. that's a word, <laughs> Chris. Okay. So, okay. you know. I yeah. know some Marie's, and I'm a Marie sometime, too. <laughs> what did you discover about your 20s filming this show? About um, yourself in your 20s? You know, <laughs> I think I wish that I had spent, I'm just a little, I'm just a year or two out of my 20s, and I wish I had spent more time in my 20s being willing to fail and mm. willing to make a big risk because it's okay to fail. And I think that my personality is such that I'm, I like to get things right. I like to get an A. I like to do it and know that I got a good job and a, a gold sticker. Right. Um, and so I, I wish I had taken more risk and risked failing and failed more. Right. And, and just said, oh, that didn't work. Let's try again. I love that. What is the show's message in 20s? What do you feel like the show's message is? Um, I think there's a lot of themes and messages, but I think one of the main thing is that you have the opportunity to be authentically yourself and mm -hmm. that that is as valid as anything else. So I think Hattie, the main character of the show is an aspiring writer and she wants to get in the room and she's, but instead of um, changing herself to get there, mm -hmm. she's just, she's allowing the rest of the world to rise to meet her. She's like, this is who I am. Right. And you can take it. You can want it in your writer's room. You can want it in your life or you cannot, but, I am authentically myself at all times. And I think that I certainly could use more of that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. I know I could. I love that. Okay, honey. So everybody's in the comments. They're like, okay, get to um, Insecure. So yes. here we are. So Christina, did you know that the whole theme behind Condola's name, because Issa like tweeted about it or she posted about it like a week ago about like the, 
inspiration behind Condola's name? Because everybody's like, Condola, where did you get that name from? So did you know that it was from like a younger Felicia Rashad? I mean, I knew, I asked Issa one day on set. I was wondering okay. too. So I, I am a huge fan of Felicia Rashad and of Condola Rashad. I think they're both brilliant actors um, and just lovely people. And so I wondered if that was the connection for the name. And so she, what she explained on her Insta story, she also explained to me. Mm -hmm. um, and if these folks don't stop ruining my good friend Condola and her name, y'all better stop coming for sis. Girl. She has a beautiful name. She has a beautiful spirit. But I do think it's hilarious, the names that Twitter has come up with. Conditioner and Corinthians Girl. being it's two of my faves. <laughs> Twitter. Black Twitter will Black do it Twitter. for us every time. Um, and I love that, that um, Felicia Rashad is an inspiration to you. I just thought yeah. that that was such good connecting of the dots, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, OK, so you were introduced in season three at Tiffany's baby shower as mm -hmm. her co-worker. And unbeknownst yeah. to you Hi, and everybody, you went on to meet Lawrence, and then you two began dating. Mm -hmm. um, where do you, did you know, like where we are today in the season with you and Lawrence, did you know that when you came on in season three that that storyline would play out the way that it did? Um, no, or so I came up when I auditioned for the role, I knew that it um, was going to be two episodes in season three and that it had the possibility of recurring. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that casting was like, yeah, you'll probably come back in season four. But I'm an actor who is, you know, I've been through a bunch and I'm not going to believe I'm going to be on something until the contract <laughs> is in the mail. So right. I was right. like, oh, great. Maybe they'll have me back season four. Or right. maybe they won't. <laughs> you just have to be ready for whatever. And so I was really grateful when I came back. But of course, I don't know what the writers are writing. I had no idea what the story, how it would end up evolving. Right. Um, but I think it's been pretty fun so far. It has been fun. Christina, where do you see the relationship with Lawrence going? I have many questions, so bear with okay. me. Okay. Well, the thing is, it's always hard for me to respond. I think that there are some actors, especially shows from shows like Insecure and other ones where people have a lot of... Um, with where the fans are really involved in wanting to love storyline. Yeah. And so people are always like, yeah, I wonder where it'll go. The thing is, I've read the script, so I know where it'll go. So I have, I don't know how to answer that in a way that is like, I can tell you where I wish it would go. Okay. So, so as a fan of the show and as a person who loves the show first, before I even started working on it, mm -hmm. I've always wanted and longed for a leveled up Issa and a leveled up Lawrence to find their love again. Right. But as an actor who wants to keep working, listen, I want Condola and Lawrence to carry on for the rest of their lives. So I, think I guess we all have to see which of my wishes come true. <laughs> or I, think we're I think we're torn because we want, we love your character, you know, on the show. And then yeah. it's like some of us kind of want Lawrence and Issa to get back together. So it's yeah. a whole thing. Listen, yeah. I'm right there with you because I'm a fan first. And so I'm like, oh, I would love to see a Lawrence Issa, you know, regroup. But right. I also want to keep working, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. You asked Lawrence if Issa had not cheated, would they still be together? Mm -hmm. And there were crickets, right? Yeah. Do you think that Lawrence's silence spoke more volumes than if he would have answered the question? I think so. I think that it feels like, to me, just as a person watching, it feels like Lawrence genuinely doesn't know. I think so, too. Yeah. It felt like he was like, oh, shoot, I didn't expect you to ask me that. And I haven't actually asked myself that. Um, so I do, I wonder, I think that happens to a lot of us where, you know, something happens in a relationship and it goes one way and you have all these imaginings about what it would have been, but I don't think that he's actually fully reconciled that, wait, what was our relationship? What was the course our relationship was headed on, whether she had cheated or not? Right, so I don't know. right. Um, if it were Christina and you were, Okay, there you go. If this were Christina, not Condola, would you still be friends with Issa if she and Lawrence got back together? Or, and, you know, he decided to, okay, I'm going to go back there. Would you still work with her and be friends with her? Or would you just close that relationship off as well? Christina, not if, Condola. If Christina? You. Yes. I don't think we'd be friends. I think that I, I think that, you know, my ethics are such that if I was still helping her and working with her on something, I would totally continue that. And at mm -hmm. the point at which the professional relationship or the professional project ended, 
I think that we would have to say deuces, my homie. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Of luck. But that's too messy. No. I, I think for Christina, no. I would certainly follow through on whatever I committed to helping you with. And then that would be the end of that. In the show, we know that Condola was married before. And you make the suggestion that you don't want to plan any more weddings. So is that out of that you don't absolutely don't want to be married again or you're not like Lawrence asked you over your ex? What is what are your thoughts? Oh my thoughts for Condola is that I don't I don't think it's a question about whether she's over her ex or not. For me, it never felt like her saying I don't want to get married again had anything to do with her ex. It had more to do with I was just divorced. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not trying to I think she's honestly telling the truth when she says um, I don't think I want to get married again in this moment. That could change later. But I literally was divorced just a hot minute ago. Right. I'm not trying to jump back into anything right now. Totally. Why didn't you and why didn't Condola invite Lawrence to the Friendsgiving though? If they're dating, why wasn't he already? Because I feel like if I'm dating somebody and it's Thanksgiving and I'm hosting or something, I would be like, do you want to come over? So why didn't Condola, if you can, give us a little... No, you know. I think that they're dating, but I think, honestly, I think it's still new. I think when yeah. we end the fourth season, it might look... I think, I think because a lot of time had passed in our present lives, but in the story of the show, a lot of time hasn't passed since that date when they sort of got back together and he said, I'm okay with you being divorced. I think it's still kind of fresh. Yeah. And I think especially it feels even fresher now that there's the whole Issa thing in the room. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that she's not trying to be like, don't get in on this but I also think say you invite someone they're not at the point of meeting family they're not even at the point of really meeting a lot of each other's mutual friends right um and so I think you, she's like I don't know what your plan is and he didn't invite her to something until the day of right. so right. I think they're still testing the waters but I don't actually think it had much to do with the Issa thing at all I think it was more that this is still really new okay and a guard up if you will would you say Condola has a little bit of a wall just to protect herself. I think it's possible that she has a wall up, but I also think, doesn't everyone when they're first starting to date? Yeah. Yeah. The red flags, you have to be like, okay, wait a minute. You know. Or just like, it's still new. Right. Yeah. I love that. Why do you think this show strikes a chord so much with viewers? I think that it's one of the first shows where we saw Black, and I think also, I think I think the fact that it's on HBO means that it gets to be fully lived in in a way that a show on a on a network like ABC or something might not be just mm -hmm. because it gets to be as explicit as it needs to be without being crazy. Right. Um, and so it feels so authentically real to what a young black person's experience might be in LA mm -hmm. that it's almost too real. It's almost like I remember when I first started watching, I was like, whoa, do I know these people? Because they live <laughs> up the street from me. <laughs> Um, and so I think we're getting to see such an authentic experience of blackness. And I think it's also really nice that such different kinds of black characters than we've seen. Someone who really is, I think that some of that awkward black girlness that Issa developed in her web series feeds over into Insecure. And we see a black woman who is a little bit awkward. She's strong and she's smart and she's all these things, but she's not like our typical, you know, the sassy black girl. No, right. she's She's kind of strange and interesting and quirky and she makes funny mistakes and she raps to herself in the mirror. And I think that sort of authenticity is refreshing. I love that. Condola, uh, look, I'm calling you Condola. Christina. I'm Christina. <laughs> Christina. I love your looks. I love Condola's looks on the show. I love Me the two-piece um, stock that you wore for Friendsgiving, the black and white little moment. I love so that. Cute. Um, is there a collaboration on your looks? Because you're the fashionista. Condola's a fashionista on the show. Is there like a collaboration with you um, and the stylist? Or do you go through a lot of fittings before you figure out, okay, what look will finally go to screen? So there's a whole team. So the, our costume designer is Shiona Trini. And she has a yeah. whole team of brilliant people. And that is their job. I come in. I, I I will comment as to whether I think this makes is a flattering look for me or if it right. fits well um, and whether I like it, sure. Um, and thankfully, they're open to those kind of thoughts. But my job as an actor, I'm telling the story from one perspective and they're telling the story from a whole nother. And I don't want to get in the way of that. And I think they're doing such a brilliant job of it that I just be like, oh, this is cute. Sure. 
Let me hop yeah. on to it. Yeah. And I think I the, the whole look that they, and the theme of her looks has been very black and white and neutral. And I think that um, it's been such a refreshing contrast to some of the more colorful characters on the show. And mm -hmm. I've, I've loved every bit of it. Listen, if I could wear half of the things Condola's been wearing. I, I love it. it. And the hair, your hair moments are always The hair so moments, good. listen, the whole team, they be hooking it up. They hook it up. Like, see, yeah. everybody looks so bomb, but I noticed, like, you're, like, coming out, and you're, like, with the, you, you just notice. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I think a part of it is that Condola's character is supposed to feel really put together. She's a full adult. She's, um, in every room, she's always the one who's the adult in the room. She's, she's a couple of steps ahead in terms of her professional life and, her confidence than Issa or some of the other characters. And so I think that they've done a great job of telling that story in terms of how her hair is always pulled back and up and mm -hmm. in a whole thing. And her clothes are always put together just right. Yes, I, think I love it. Part of the storytelling. Christina, it's Mother's Day weekend this weekend. Yes. And you're a mom, so happy I early am. Mother's Day. Thank um, you. What do you have planned for Mother's Day? Do you have anything special planned? Well, I don't have nothing planned. I'm hoping <laughs> my husband and my baby do, but... Honestly, I mean, we're in this weird time, so maybe we'll just order dinner and enjoy each other's company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go on a nice walk. Right. What's a piece of advice that your mom has shared with you that has, like, stayed with you over the years, whether it be from a child or an adult? Um, I think that a big, the biggest thing that I've gotten from my mom is less the things that she's – advice that she's given me, and she's given me a lot of great advice. It's just that daily I see her in prayer. Daily I see her devoting herself to time to spend with God. And I see how that affects her relationships with us and with her, my dad. Um, and that she spends so much time, I think, connecting to source and connecting back to God. That the way that she loves us so freely and so fully, it feels like God's love. And so I want to do that to my family. I want to be so connected to God that every that every word I say is of kindness and joy and sweetness and enough his spirit so I've gotten that from her for sure wow that's beautiful Christina I love that thank you Christina for taking time to talk to us today I truly appreciate thank you, you. Know. yes and um the show comes on again this Sunday at what time does it come on 10 p.m on HBO insecure watch it thank you so much Christina thanks have for a having beautiful me. Mother's Day weekend thank you have a good one